he had to get his tree, he had to fill his tree, he had to get it on the ground before he could earn any money because that's the way he, he made his money by selling his product so he had to fell his tree so this is what we call the standing block now this here is Jordan, say hello Jordan <coughs> Jordan Moscato comes from Bear Regis he's a heating engineer by trade doesn't work in the wood but uh, I know his father does and uh, Jordan as a young boy uh, he was uh, giving us a lock splitter and said that well, his father told me, if you well, want some pocket money, you're going to have to earn it. And uh, that's why he started off. And coming into the wood chopping is just a natural progression from there. So anyway, so right, I'll start Jordan off working. And I'll tell you a bit more about what he does as he progresses through the log. So Jordan, if you're ready, axman, stand to your logs. Go one, two, three. Now, he just doesn't hit the log square in. He works on a 40, 45 degree angle. If you hit it square in, that's the strongest part of the tree. That is where it's expecting to be hit. And uh, the most efficient way of cut, getting through the grain of the wood is to work on this 40, 45 degree angle. Take out a scarf the same length as the diameter of the log. So if you've got a 12 inch log, you take out a 12 inch scarf. And then when you go around the back, you take out a scarf a little bit higher so when you come to drive the log off you're driving into what we call clean wood because if, although he's just demonstrating it here if you're doing this in a race and you get a flat thing called wooded where you've got your back way too low and uh, that can cost you hits, it can cost you blows, it can cost you time and you've got less chance of winning the race spreads his blows from one side to the other clearing his wood each time if he doesn't clear his wood, his chip will not come free. Uh, <coughs> coming through to the centre now, and uh, he's just about to drive the log off. Yeah. And there it goes. Uh, well, that's got the cobwebs out this morning, Jordan. Ah, very good. Right. Well, thank you very much, Jordan. Very good demonstration there of the standing block. And so. Uh, so right, the timber cutter, he got his tree felled now and now he had to cut the tree into length. Cut the tree into length for the sawmiller. He was the most important man in the wood. He was the one buying the timber. He was the one paying the money and he would give you a spec, a specification as to what length he wanted you to cut the timber. Uh, all the top diameters and the things like that. And he knew what he wanted for the orders that coming into his uh, sawmill and uh, this is the competition piece that's come down from that now this here is richard say hello richard richard uh, richard white comes from bear regis no we don't come from bobington now don't you oh right he moved from bear regis bobington now which is just down the road now uh, richard is a fencing contractor by trade does another again doesn't work in the woods and this is just like a sort of a hobby to him and uh, I'll start Richard off working and I'll tell you a bit more about what he does as he progresses through the log. So Richard, if you're ready, Axman, stand to your logs, go one, two, three. Now the underhand is a little bit easier to learn because you can work with the line of your body. So when we're training our young Axman, when they first come into wood chopping, this is the one that we more train them to do because it's a little bit easier to learn because you turn your feet, keep everything in line keep in line with your scarf on your log that you marked up with a standing block you've got to work across your body take more hand-eye coordination because one hit in the right place is worth two in the wrong there's no point in coming out here going like a little woodpecker hitting all over the place because it just doesn't work and uh, with wood chopping and uh, well, timber sports, I suppose that is one of the uh, things that you can, uh, as you get older, because you get more wiser, you've got more power, and because power and accuracy is far better than speed. The same again, on that 40, 45 degree angle, clearing his wood, top and bottom, each side, <coughs> if he doesn't take his, take clear his axe out the top and out the bottom, 
his chip will not come free. And uh, when he goes round the back, works along his log a bit more again, so that when he's driving the log off, he's then driving into clean wood. And uh, you'll know whether he's got his mass right, is uh, when he goes round the back, if he's hitting there and he's hitting into dead wood, you can hear it, it all goes thud, and then it, and then he's wasting blows, he's wasting hits, and he's wasting time. So right, so right, very good, very good demonstration there, Richard. Thank you very much. And uh, <coughs> so right, so right now you've got your tree felled, you've got tree cut into late with a sawmiller, and. Uh, well, another problem the timber cutter had, he had to work above the ground. He had to work 15, 20 foot up above the ground sometimes. Sometimes the trees were fire damaged, they were fluted, they were hollow in the bottom. And when I say fluted, you was actually stood in the root plate of the tree. Uh, and sometimes it, well, sometimes not necessarily so much over in this country, but in North America and in the Southern Hemisphere, this was always a problem. So anyway, this is a competition piece that's come down to the, from that. It's called the Springboard Chop or the Tree Climb. And uh, this here is Tom. Say hello, Tom. Tom Redman uh, comes from Beer Regis. And uh, Tom's been with me now for, of oh, since we started off in 2014. And uh, very good, very good axman. He's developed into a very good axman now. And uh, very Mount valued member of the team he is as well. So anyway, I'll start Tom off working and I'll tell you a bit more about what he does as he progresses up the tree. So Tom, if you're ready, Axman, stand to your logs, go one, two, three. Now we've already put the pockets in this tree, A, so we can climb the tree because of for the whole five days that we're here and it means we haven't got to change the poles all the time. And uh, not only that, there's a bit of safety in it because uh, when you learn to climb the tree, it's all the learning curve because uh, you've got to have your boards in the right place, your axe in the right place. You use your axe as much as you can because it's your handle when you pull yourself up onto the board. And when you actually put the axe into the block at the top, uh, when you're going up there, you actually put your axe in a certain place so it's actually one of the hits. So, and then you pull yourself up. So, and so when he gets up to the uh, on the top board, he's already got a hit in his block before he's even up there. Same again is what you do the standing block on the ground. A little bit more difficult. Your back foot is directly behind you, and uh, uh, well, he's uh, there. You are very good. <laughs> you finished that, yeah? You finished that from all one side. Very good. Uh, uh, right there, you are. Right, thank you very much, Tom, for that demonstration there. Very good. That's the springboard chop of the tree climb. And uh, so we now move on uh, from there. Well, the timber cutter, he didn't have many tools. Uh, he had an axe and a few wedges and a, a sledgehammer. But he also had a thing called a crosscut saw. Now, this <coughs> crosscut saw that I'm going to hold up now it may not look very much to you, but the tooth pattern on it was as revolutionary in its day as what our chainsaws were and now our modern day harvesters. Because the problem was, before this tooth pattern was invented, the, which is the normal sort of like peg tooth saws, which is the uh, saw tooth pattern you've got on your tenon saw or your panel saw in your shed, you couldn't get the sawdust out of the cut, especially on this length of saw. And it would saw would jam up, it would jam in the cut. And the only way you could get it out is by releasing the um, saw out of the cut, releasing as much sawdust as you could, and then putting it back in. Well, this was laborious, it was time consuming, and not only that, you weren't earning any money. Well, with this tooth pattern, you got four teeth and a raker. And uh, the raker tooth actually raked the sawdust out of the cut. So you've got four teeth that scribe the wood, and then the raker tooth, like a little plow, comes and rakes the sawdust out. Well, it meant you didn't have to stop. It meant you could just keep cutting. And not only was you earning more money, 
he was also getting the job done quicker as well. So <coughs> he was invented by a man who's an Englishman by the man by the name of Lance and uh, he called it the Lance Tooth Perforated but uh, like a lot of other things um, he invented it but couldn't get it developed over here in this country so he went across to America met up with a chap by the name of Henry Diston who uh, saw the potential of this tooth, tooth pattern uh, developed it and that's how you saw Henry Diston saws that was sold all over the world and this actually is a Henry Diston saw now um, you will see if you look on one of these things on you on this YouTube on the on these computers that everybody seems to have nowadays if you look at the uh, big old photographs of the big old sequoia trees in North America and a lot of them in the southern hemisphere of the trees over there you'll see that the the saws that they stood up there take with their photographs and if you look closely they all the saws have got this tooth pattern in it so um, so right so now what uh, Johnny and and Joe here Johnny Johnny Barrowman uh, he comes from uh, well he comes from Morden I think in uh, Dor well, Morden just outside of uh, uh, Bear Regis and uh, Johnny's a uh, a uh, tractor driver, combine driver, I think they finished harvesting yesterday, I think. So he's come over here today to join us for a couple of days. Uh, a bit like a bit like Bassman's holiday, but still there you are. And uh, then there's Joe, Joe Grew. Uh, Joe's come, met up with him from uh, Surrey. He met up with us a couple of years ago. Said he wanted to come and join us. We, we saw him at uh, Guildford Show and a very valued member of the team he is as well. Uh, Joe's a uh, chainsaw uh, assessor, uh, tutor in a big college up in uh, Guildford. And uh, so I'll start him off working with this saw. And this is probably one of the most, right, go away, go away boys, where you go. Yeah, just draw a disc off. And it's probably one of the most uh, advanced saws competition saws that you can buy in the world today but it's based on this still based on this old tooth pack which was taken up by a firm called Tuatise in uh, in New Zealand specifically for saw racing uh, it was uh, 30 years or I suppose yeah 25 30 years ago that they redeveloped it actually for the for the racing circuit now before that they uh, the saws that everybody was using was a saw called an M-tooth, which is, uh, gets its name from the shape of the teeth. Uh, now it was developed for, uh, worked out on a computer, and it's only the action of you actually, and the angles of the actual teeth, that actually pulls the sawdust out of the cup. So if you just draw a disc off of this saw, <laughs> and you'll see that there's a lot of, controversy going on at the moment. Some people prefer m for soaring for competition purposes. Some prefer peg and rapers. Uh, the m they're a little bit more easier to use. You can put a bit more weight on them and they don't buckle up. Whereas the uh, uh, peg and raper, because <coughs> they're so uh, hungry and want to eat the wood, then uh, they, if you put too much weight on them, they do jam up. So right, so what are you going to do now then? You're going to have a race or what are you going to do? Sorry? Oh right. Right. So what we're going to think, what they're going to do now, I think they're going to have a race. The M2 versus the cross cut. I mean versus the peg and raker. Uh, and we'll just see which one's the fastest. So they'll, I expect there'll be an argument as to who wants to saw what and who with whom. Uh, let me just see how these saws do actually work. The, the peg and raker actually doesn't, you can see the way it works because it, the, uh, the, the raker tooth actually draws out a straw of wood. It doesn't draw out dust. Um, this saw has got a three teeth in the raker, not four because it's been made for, or designed for 
single man saw and so you can take one handle off and you can use it as a single man saw as well but so right so right boys are you ready for this then this is the great dorset steam fair cross cut race or something something good. right so right so sawyers are you ready go one two three you need to keep the saw level on the wood, straight between your partner, pull the saw, go push, just keep rolling it down, rolling it down, go down with the saw. But, see, there, there's a bit too much weight on it. And there it goes, and there you are. But, so right, there you are then, very good. So that's a little bit about the cross-cut saws and things like that. And uh, what are we going to do now? Oh, ah, we're going on to, we're going to have the uh, handicap. Well, we're going to do this on the handicap, I think. Well, that's the wrong side on there. Right. Okay. Now, in 1989, uh, or about then anyway, there was a handicap system introduced. Um, because there were certain axemen at that particular time that were going around winning all the competitions and uh, some other axemen were actually whinging and moaning about it. And I can't think for a lot of me who was going around winning all the competitions. Still, there you are. Now, the way it works, the more you win, the higher your handicap or the more experienced you are. So, you'll see the way it works when we start them all off. So if I can e extract the merry men out of their tent and uh, Richard sets his log up. Oh, this is Matt's log, right. And uh, on block one, we have, ah, no, uh, 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 going on, yeah, where's Gavin? Uh, Gavin. Ah. Right. Ah, Gavin's on block four. He's going on the count of ten. Is that right? Right. Ah. Richard's on the count of three. Richard, where's Richard? Ah, right. Richard's down there. Right, to start off with Richard. Hello, Richard. You met him earlier. Right, you're going on the count of three. And then we have uh, Gavin, and you'll we have Matt. You're going on the count of 18. Yeah. And then we have Johnny here. Johnny, you're going on the count of 20. Don't worry me. Tom worked all this out. I expect Tom, yeah, I expect Tom's got a nice little matchstick, don't you? Uh, Joe, you're going on the count of 12. Ah, right. Jordan, you're going on 25, and Tom, you're going on 25. Alright, and I promise not to put any halves in, and I won't do any stuttering. Right, <laughs> alright. So if you're ready for this gentleman, and they're all trained right up, they're all keen, ready to go. Yeah, right. Axman, stand to your logs, go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, and now they're all away, and uh, You'll see how the handicap system works, and uh, Joe's just a uh, uh, Joe's just a uh, Joe's underneath it all. He's starting to cry now because if you heard a little tink, but uh, that was his act. Uh, but still, no, he's keeping going. Uh, Jordan's off, Johnny's off, Tom's off, Joe's off. Matt's off, Gavin's off, and now uh, uh, Richard is just, uh, yeah, yeah. 
You, you can slow down now, Richard. There you are, and Richard's on. So, right. So, right. Very good, ladies. Very good, boys. Thank you very much. Um, so, from uh, that's been our first performance of the day. We're on again at uh, uh, one ten past one. So, from uh, Richard, Gavin, Matt, Johnny, Jordan, Tom, and Joe, and myself. My name's Mick Percival. We've been the Dorset Axemen. We hope you enjoyed our display, and we'll see you again at ten past one. Thank you.